Hey, welcome back to another C-Sharp tutorial for our Hero Maker. You can see that I'm about ready to fill in the details for a new hero called The Bulk. And let's click Create Hero. So it shows me the summary, and it tells me that this is the fourth hero I've made. So I'm going to have a list of Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and The Bulk. Now, the goal of this video is that when I click on Batman, I should see the details of Batman appear in this text box. And so that's what we're going to program in the next few minutes. So to update this text box, we're going to have to do something inside of the list box. So let's double click on list box one. We have a new method called select index changed. So that tells me that I've just selected a new item. So what I would like to do is take the text property of my text box one and give it the property of the uh, list box one selected item. So that should be easy. Just whatever you select gets sent into the text. We have a problem though. It says here that you have an object and you want to put it into a property called string. So what we need now is a toString method. So toString should work and uh, let's see what it does. This will have a problem but it will at least show us some data. So let's go ahead and put in ABC as a hero name and click create hero. We got one hero and now when I click on ABC, it shows me the two string method just prints out hero maker dot hero. So I need to make a better method for two string. So to make a better method, I'm going into the hero object. And we don't have a two string method yet, so let's create one down here. All right, so public two string is the method we're looking for. And it says you must return a type. Well, let's see, two string should probably return a string, right? Now I have another message. It says uh, you have a two problems. You have an inheritance and you should use the word override because you're changing the original design. So let's do override. Now I still have an error and it says not all code paths return a value. So let's go and put one in here. So for the first example, I'm just going to show that the toString method will hold the name. And let's just add one more thing. Let's pick another property at random. So let's say speed. And uh, let's see what that does. So I create a new hero. Let's call him um, nobody. And his speed, we're going to change to 18 and create the hero. All right, so now you can see when nobody is selected, it says nobody 18. Just try another guy. Let's try uh, ABC for a hero and change his property to 13, it looks like. And so now you can see if I select each one of these, the two string method is now properly showing some data in here. Now the challenge here is that we want to make this whole box show all of the data of our superhero, not just his name and his speed value. So our toString method is going to require quite a bit more code, obviously, to make this a complete list. Now, it, it occurs to me that we've done some of this work already. So let's, let's go and borrow some work that we've done on our previous form. So let's go to form one. And uh, where did we create this status message? Oh, it looks like we have a lot of code for status message here. So I'm going to look at this button create click and I am going to copy a whole list of code that we've used already. So we're going to adapt this to the two string method for our hero. So let's see all the way down to looks like line 146 just before we create the new hero. I'm going to copy all of that code and let's go back into hero and put it into our two string method. So a lot of this will work, some of it won't. So let's go fix up the part that doesn't work. So let's start at the beginning with a new string. So I'm gonna set a new string called status message and set it to be empty. Now the rest of this is just appending. Okay, so next I'm going to do is a property called a name. So let's do status message plus equals name equals, and then we'll get a property of this object. So this dot name. 
All right, so I'm going to delete another chunk of text. So all of the variable assignments, we can go through and select all of this and delete it. So how far down do we go? Let's go down until we come to the part where we get the new status message. So where it begins to say, your hero name is name. So we delete all of the variables and just press delete key. All right, so now we can start patching this together. The status message, we can not declare it twice. It says here, your new hero is name. Well, we've already got that in the line above, so let's take that out. Now we're getting into the new stuff. So it says here, you've selected the following abilities. Instead of ability zero, let's see what our properties are. So this dot, and we have a variable called special abilities, and it is special ability zero. So we can go through and replace all of these. So I go through and replace all of the lowercase special abilities uh, variable with the property called this dot special abilities. So in the uh, C sharp uh, programming language, you're not always required to use the word this. So if you're from a Java perspective, you'll think that this is like a, a mistake, but it is possible to either put this in or you can leave it out. So either case is legal. So we get to the end here where we have special abilities. The next thing I want to add to the status message is now what it says about where I work. It says your, your hero works in these cities. So what are the properties of my cities? Let's go type in this dot. And uh, do we have anything in here? Office locations. So office locations is the variable we're looking for. Now the next down here, it says your, your hero would like to travel by a preferred transport. So let's type this and let's see what it says. Preferred transport. The next items are speed, strength, and stamina. And they also can be changed to use the properties of the hero class. So I'll go through the rest of these and change them from their current uh, variable name to the property of the class. So when we get to the color, we can just get rid of the back color property. We are going to get just the cape color to string. Okay, it looks like we've got ourselves all of the properties. Now let's get to the very last item, and we're looking to return the status message. Okay, so this is a, an adapted two-string method that came from our, um, our other previous work. Let's run the program. All right, so you can see now that when I create Superman, I will have a status message that appears in my box. Let's try another hero. So now I have Wonder Woman. When I select Wonder Woman, you can see that the box changes its properties, and so Superman and Wonder Woman are distinct. Now what happened to my new line characters? This is all crammed into one line. There's, a, there's another way to create new lines. So I forget how to do a new line character in a text box, obviously, it didn't work. So I'm going to search for new line character in text box. And let's uh, come down into the Microsoft official website. And it says here, this guy's having the same trouble that I am. I've tried slash n, but it doesn't seem to work in a text box. So it says here, make sure that you have multi-line property is set. Well, I did that. Let's go down a little further. It says, I think you forgot to use slash r. So we use slash r and slash uh, n. And so that seems to be our code. So the uh, reason why it works is because the explanation here. It says the uh, slash r is an escape sequence for the carriage return. Carriage return is another way to say the enter key. And then the slash n represents a new line feed. So the combination put together creates a return line feed. Okay, so now you know. So let's come back into our uh, two string method and add that. So in front of the slash n, I'm gonna put an r. And it occurs to me that the status message needs to be appended, so we have a plus equal sign. So wherever we have a 
slash n, we're going to slip in the r key as well. Okay, so that should create new lines for all of our character attributes. Okay, so let's create a Superman, give him some characteristics, and choose OK. Let's see what it looks like. So now we have Superman, and you can see that each of these items shows up on a different line. Let's create another hero. I'm going to create the Hulk and choose Create the Hero. So now when I select Hulk, you can see that we have a different selection of text when we do Superman. So it appears that this is working. That's a good stopping point for this video. In the next video, we're going to add some sorting abilities and then a delete button.